I need you. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. Hayden's... yes? Well, that's one way to sour my night. I already saw you got his little wrong with you, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. Really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that isn't gonna happen at this point. Hey guys, Lucky here, coming at you with part 8 of 2064 Read Only Memories. So we left off last time. We know Hayden is dead. We don't actually know that. That's what the evidence is pointing to. I still have my conspiracy theories, obviously, which we talked about last episode. Um, but we were left with a choice, right? So we were left to either follow Tomcat and go to the radio station, or the journalist station, right? The KCOB, and investigate how the mesh net entries are being changed or go to the head of the flower cybernetics which is Fairchild's lead and see how that lead goes up so it really matters who I trust the most and I trust neither of them because I'm paranoid but I trust Fairchild less so we are going to go ahead and go to the Koss IO court um, cause I am not going to the fire mansion. Here we are. The Koss IO Corporation office building. Yeah, yeah. It looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under Koss IO. Okay. Yeah, is that important? Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. Fair enough. That makes Not sense. Not impossible, but unlikely. Oh, it's the same car. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll have to look further afield. So I see what they're saying. Like, there would be no motive. So I'm not going to say how so. Like, I get what he's saying. If all these companies are owned by... Cos.io, the motive isn't there to smear your company's name because that'd just be stupid. So I guess we'll have to look further afield. Did that make sense? All right. So, so the welcome sign. Employees, pretty interactive screen. I don't know what that is. I got an achievement saying you're hopeless. <laughs> Makes me worried. Uh, Employees a pretty fancy interactive screen up front. If, uh, they can keep it outdoors, electrical work. And it must be on another level. All right. Ooh. <laughs> Letting everyone know you spent a fortune on that part, uh, the credits. The World Series is once again. I'll try to start a riot. Okay. What's happens if we go up? There's two trees. Genuine real proof, real trees. These became all the rage back in the 40s. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Many companies sponsor roof trees. They used to sponsor roof animals, <laughs> but after the York's raccoon blackout of 2060, they stopped that practice. That's um, interesting. There's something in between there, but we can't quite get there yet. So let's just go to the door and open the door. The mesh net says Augmented Eyes SF Office is run by an individual named Zinn. And Tomcat confirmed she's expecting us. Yep, let's go to All Zen. we have to do now is head up and talk to her. No shenanigans this time. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so first off, what is that thing? Executive Series ROM, designed for office and high level account maintenance. It looks like Kirby with robot attachments. Can we talk to the thing? The IK Stroke 47 aren't known for being verbose. Better leave it. Okay. Can I touch it? Better leave it. Looks to be in the middle of uh, high value calculation work. All right. Oh, let's see the photograph. Picture of a toupee is an odd thing to frame. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's an animal of some kind. Uh, all right. Let me have that moment. That must be Zen. 
stash of video games and a super family link? What? So first off, let's take a look at the video games. Sweet and unopened duck game. This game gives me the urge to start quacking uncontrollably. Is something wrong with me? No, no, there's nothing wrong with you. Oh yeah, Super Family Link. This plays all the old hits. <laughs> Yonkey's Peninsula, Water Rash, Super Slug 3, Revenge of the Super Slug. Okay, let's play that real quick. It's not plugged in the monitor, and your imagination is only so powerful. That is super unfortunate. Live update weather forecast, the bottom corner of the screen. Zen seems like the type of person that would punish someone for fiddling with the settings. Okay. She doesn't seem that mean. Sharp dressed woman stares you down and don't look away. Alright, let's just talk to her. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Yep. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? Uh, water is nice. My assistant will bring it right away. Look, I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing in another journalist to look into this. Whatever you dig up, I'll have to explain to the rest of the press. But it's still better than the other options. Chances are I have another corporation scoping out my territory. If they aren't in the coalition, they'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. Yeah. If they are in the coalition, it won't look good for me to send in my own reporters against my allies. Even if I do end up being right. Ooh. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. <laughs> At least then we can fight back on a familiar battlefield. Fair enough. Now, what do you know about our problem here? Someone's tampering with the articles on the mesh. That's the long and short of it. My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. I'm not going to pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles aren't being made from inside our network. Hmm. The versions on our servers are still the originals, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. I'm hoping that you can do some digging, maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead on who might be doing it. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. Interesting. Yeah, so let's start. What kind of changes are being made? Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. Hmm. So far, almost all of the edits seem to be making our articles more positive on new technologies coming out, and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution. Interesting. That's actually what tipped us off. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the human revolution protests was changed to be downright vitriolic, and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. Huh. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the human revolution if I don't have to. Alright. So why are you sure that's not an inside job? I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. They told me that they tore out all of the routers that broadcast to the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes that I'm not going to even begin to claim to understand. I pay them big bucks, so I'm inclined to believe them unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Alright, even any where I should start looking. Not really. My admin says that only someone with intimate access to Parallax's network protocols could make these kind of changes as something passes across the net. Personally, I think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The public trust rating of Parallax makes them look like a saint among wolves, so their control over the mesh network provisions is strange. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS or a different MeshNet protocol without that trust. Hmm. Or, you know, 
Parallax is abusing its power to spread pro-tech propaganda. Doubtful they need to. I'm sure you'll be a good journo and bring me back the right answer. Alright, that's a start. I know Tin Hat conspiracies aren't an ideal start, but it's the best we can do with the info we have. Anything else I can tell you, off the record? If you want it on the record, it'll cost you your firstborn and a really good cigar. Alright, can you think of any reason you're being targeted? Like what? There isn't much more I can tell you about Augmented Eye, really. It's a fairly simple and straightforward operation, if I say so myself. We started off in Venezuela as a sleek current events and news organization in 2055. Almost ten years ago now. We focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings, on top of major news. We are one of the few good ones left. Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we do, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places, and it paid off. Cos Io Corp is happy to have us here in the OSF. It wasn't until hybrid tech started hitting the public sphere that we had to make any changes to our model. Hmm. All of that said, I can't see why anyone would target us. Unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with the human revolution, and there are much more direct ways of making that happen. Alright, know if anyone else has articles being manipulated? Uh, Alright, look. I wasn't going to tell you this. If it gets out, I'd have to answer some really hard questions. So, if you didn't hear this from me, you might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. Ooh, we remember Charlie Nova from that article when we first turned the computer on. That's all I'll say. And remember, you take a bite out of him with my name as your defense, I drop you fast. Alright, so what's the real reason you're bringing it out to hell? Mm -hmm. Your own journalists should be able to handle digging up the, uh, some dirt on a hacker. What? Not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't a good enough reason. Because I'd really like to avoid that. And look, you've covered culture wars, right? My journalists are good, but they're mostly good at gadget reviews, implant releases, not taking too many stims so they remember what they did at raves for the after-party reports. <laughs> this needs an investigative journalist with serious contacts, not tech personalities. The fact that my network admin recommended you to me means you probably know the right people. Now, does that cover it? I'd like to remove my nose from your ass. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it for now, I'll get back to your question. No, uh, don't, don't bother. Questions. In hindsight, I probably should have been a bit more circumspect about speaking to you. Plausible deniability and all. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write, but do remember you got in contact with me not even second-hand, but third-hand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Yep. Wink wink, nudge nudge, or whatever. If you need anything else, have your person get with my person. Don't come here directly. Now, I'd show you the door, but you know the way. And this isn't the only fire I'm trying to put out. Good luck, and goodbye. Alright. Well. well... That was more confrontational than I'd have expected, considering she was the one needing help. Yep. She never brought you that water, either. That is also true. Is it always like this? <laughs> Um, so we have the choice between she knows the game, people don't usually give away much, secrets are expensive, and then without wise there wouldn't be much to write about. So we'll just go she knows the game, but we didn't walk away with nothing. Very true. I will admit that I am interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. Well, I'm also interested in Charlie. 
or whatever his name is. If all of this really is due to somebody manipulating the mesh net on the inside, it may give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden once and for all. That said, I will take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating, lest we lead ourselves down a false path. Agreed. Anyway, seems like our next step is... What the... Uh oh You're kidding me. Oh my god. What the... That sin! This just got real. Yeah, dude, we need to go help her. It's too late. Considering the angle and height of the fall, rendering suitable aid is beyond our capabilities now. Your desire is laudable, but emergency services are already on the way. They will assist her as much as they can. We should head back to her office and see if we can determine what happened here. We're about to get framed. Perhaps no Turing. We can still dispense justice. No Turing. You're talking about going into the scene of a crime. Turing, come on, man. <sighs> See, we're about to go to jail, man. Come on. All right, let's go. Hmm. It looks like the desk has been cleared off. Let's take a look around, but be careful not to disturb any evidence. The police will be here soon. Even a ROM like that doesn't deserve an end like this. Yeah. So we can look at the broken window. My thermal sensors only detect a single set of lingering footprints, and they end almost three feet away from the window. All right. Considering the density of this glass, I can't imagine Zin jumped from that far and managed to throw herself through the pane without help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any other thermal hotspots. Had to have been a ROM. No one else was in here. It doesn't look like it. It was your sister. Oh my god. Not now it's making sense too. And because it's a shredded. Yep, flawless foliage has fallen. Because it, again, this is a intentionally shredded plant. Mm. Her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her. Best to keep your fingerprints off of the keyboard. Mm. Most of this isn't very interesting. Committee reports, financials, article submissions. Here we go. According to this email between Zin and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. The admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in writing styles. Some blog posts by their head anchor Charlie Nova stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently he's a bit pompous, if in an affable way, and his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, he's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. Zin seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever is manipulating these posts spun it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist. Yep, so there's a, there's a lead. Is the one we need to talk to. Unless he's already dead. We should go. There isn't anything else here, and the police are almost on the scene. Son of a... Yep. Not almost. They're on the scene. I should have figured the two of you would be here. You just won't stay out of trouble no matter what I say, will you? 
total misunderstanding. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we are merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Zim to discuss a possible lead and found her office in this state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it. Fine, fine. Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. We'll chat about the case more when I'm not busy scraping bodies off the pavement, you hear me? Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately, and we can speak further at a later time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. <laughs> Thanks, Lexi. You the boss, boss. Hmm. Interesting. So we have a choice to say, why did you lie to Lexi? We could have told her about the articles. Or we could say, I didn't think she would buy it. She wouldn't have from me. I don't... See, this seems harsh to say. I'm, I'm going to say, I didn't think she would buy it. She wouldn't have from me. It doesn't matter anyway. Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Zinn gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers she can just as well get from a hard drive. Has it occurred to you that whoever threw Zinn out of that window could be after the same thing we are, except to silence the story rather than to get it out? Hmm. We have little time for fooling about and must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him, too. I have highlighted the main Neo SF offices for TMI Entertainment on your map. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, this is getting exciting now. We Now, now we got murder up going on. Well, I mean, we, we kind of had it already, but, like, we had suspected murder. Now we got, like, people falling out windows. I hope some pity for me still remains, considering my recent tone, because I'm honestly not sure where we should start. I suppose we should just ask the receptionist to point us to somebody who can answer our questions. Um, sounds like a plan. Oh, she looks like a hybrid. Yeah. She's either had a long day or standing by or just fidgety. I don't want to touch the receptionist. Let's talk. Welcome to TMI Entertainment Incorporated. Do you have an appointment? Let's see, so we have a choice. No, but we need to talk to whoever in charge here. When you speak with Charlie Nova, or I have a story we're about to break and wanted to offer TMI an opportunity to comment. So I think I'm gonna go with the third one here. Oh, um, I guess I should send you to sympathy then? Oh, she'd be pretty mad if someone ran something without her getting a chance to comment. That'll at least get us some talk to her. She's on the other side of the room. Don't bother the talent, though. She hates that. Okay, so she must be the newsroom employee. So this is the assistant. Film assistant taking a break. Alright. That must be TMI's lead cinematographer. At least he seems like he's the one. Uh, talent show host, stern looking producer. I'm assuming this is. Hey, you, over here. What are you doing, bother? Bobby Fine told me to cancel all my appointments for. I swear that girl couldn't find her ears if I taped them over her eyes. At least she makes a decent cup of coffee. Then, okay, I just. Yeah. Yes, I am. And if you don't mind, I keep the show running here, so I'll be brief. 
Okay, 17. What are you doing in my building? Hmm, you're fun. We've been given a lead on a story that involves one of your personalities, Charlie Nova. Someone has been manipulating his articles on the MeshNet and turning them into scathing attacks against the human revolution. We are trying to track the culprit, and we need to talk to Mr. Nova to hunt down further leads. You let your ROM do all the talking for you? Must be one of those new interrogation modules all the fresh meat rave about. Dude, you need to chill there, uh, Broseph. Of course I know someone's been modifying Charlie's articles. I'm tracking them down myself. What I want to know is why I should help you snatch the scoop out from underneath me. Super hacker twists MeshNet news for personal political vendetta. The clicks basically farm themselves. Yeah, we should say, say that to Zin. Zin? Augmented eyes, Zin? What does Zin have to do with this? She's the one who gave us the lead to begin with. Then, someone threw her out of her office window. We figured Mr. Nova might be next, and we wanted to get to him first. Holy shit. Fine, I'll let you talk to Charlie. There we go. All right, honesty's the best policy. If someone is trying to kill people over this, I'd rather it be out and done with as fast as possible. I mean, shit, we're in entertainment scene. Nobody should die for that. But hey, watch yourself with Charlie. He's a pompous clown, but he's my pompous clown. All right. Keep it civil, or I'll throw your ass out and figure this out on my own. Now get on it. I need to make some calls. Okay. So perhaps we should save, because the way they the way they made us sound his attitude. Perhaps we should save. Maybe in a slot two. Yeah, yeah. Can name it two. Alright, let's continue. Alright then. Let's do this. He's practically glowing and has uh, people waiting on him hand foot. Definitely the talent, Charlie Nova. All right. We could touch him, but that probably make him mad. Fantastic! How fantastic! I just love your ROM. Not quite as stunning as mine, but still pretty grand. <laughs> oh, he's a one-upper. Very sleek, very clean. Bravo. Thanks, bro. Oh, uh, Sympathy is doing that thing where she waves at me to hurry things up. Right down to brass tacks then, I suppose. Wait! I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Charlie Nova, host of Tonight in the Stars and Star in the Stratosphere. But you already knew that, I'm sure. The, the whole smile thing. What can I do for you? Hmm? Uh, what was about TMI? Yes, any additional information on your station would be greatly appreciated. Well, it's the best damn network on the planet, I can tell you that. We put out top notch news and entertainment, but with real heart that our competitors just can't match. But if you really want to know about TMI, you need to know about sympathy. Okay. It's her pride and joy, after all. Sure, she can be a little acerbic, and sure, she calls me a poofy-haired oaf all the time. But you can really tell she cares, you know? <laughs> Deep down. So I guess sympathy is a girl. Um, I assumed it was just a man with a feminine voice, but it's a she. So we're gonna call her a her now. I'm not sure if that throat cutting gesture she's making is a signal to move to another topic or a threat against my physical well-being. So let's move on. <laughs> what next? 
Yeah, let's talk about you, buddy. Oh, you flatter me. Yes, you do. I can't imagine you've come all this way just to get my story. Have you? Uh, not quite, but... After all, I've already published my very own splendid 100% original autobiography. Like a Nova. But I suppose I can give you a quick rundown, even if sympathy is giving me the stink eye. I grew up here on the mean streets of Neo-SF, but my jocular nature and striking countenance got me scouted for a few small product advertisements. And the rest is not-so-ancient history. <laughs> now I'm the host of the largest celebrity news show on the mesh, and I couldn't be happier. It's all thanks to my swarms of fans, though. They're the ones who count. So have you heard that your stories are getting altered once they're posted on the mesh? Oh, it may have come up in the last lunch meeting we had, but Sympathy assured me that it was some kind of technical glitch, and our support people were on top of it. They're top-notch, the absolute best money can buy. So I don't think there's anything more to say on the subject. Hmm. Yeah, so we have a choice now. We can be like, you're telling me you don't know anything at all. And be mean. We're not going to do that. Look, Charles, we're just trying to get the bottom of this. That's a little direct. Uh, we're going to be as polite as possible. We've heard of other people's posts getting altered, too. That's very upsetting. I hope you've passed along that information to Sympathy. I'm certain our tech people will be able to find the culprit in short order once they know enough about it. Hopefully. I really don't know what I have to do with it, though. So we have a choice now to do this, so like... We can be like, it was your post they were manipulating, or it's a bit weirder and you don't know more. I'm not going to do that. I'm like, Chuck, I'm sure you're better informed than that, right? You're the top of this heap, yeah? It's Charlie. And of course, I'm the leading man around here. Who has said otherwise? I'm not quite certain what you think it is that I don't know, but I assure you that I know what it is. I like it. You won't be able to trip me up that easily. Yeah. So let's say, so we have a choice. If they can ask you stories, what else can they get on you? Um, or just worry for your safety, or someone has already ended up in the hospital with this chip. Obviously, he doesn't like anything but Charlie, so we're not going to do anything like that. That was a mistake on my part beforehand. So, we can either just do, we're worried for your safety, or worry about his image. So let's do worried for safety. I appreciate that, I really do. But I trust Sympathy, and I'd stake my life on her getting this all taken care of post-haste. She's never let me down before, if you don't count for getting my birthday. And I don't think she will now. Hmm. You've just gotta have faith in people sometimes, right? Ah, <laughs> that's pretty inspirational in and of itself. Yeah, really inspirational, Charlie. All right, that's enough. Charlie has a show to get ready for. He's told you everything he's going to. So get the hell out of here. If you find anything more interesting than what you got, come, come back and see me again. Directly. Remember, I'm the victim in all this. Hmm. Oh, man. She looks really cheesed off now. Uh, do you know how snippy she can get? Uh, okay, apparently. Coffee ready. Maybe that'll calm her down. We're very sorry if we made your day more difficult. Perhaps I could take the coffee over to Sympathy and we could try to smooth her rumpled feathers. Um, yeah, okay, sure. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You make 
her even matter? Oh no. On second thought. Yeah. It'll only take a minute. All right. But she takes it with plenty of milk. Yeah. So let's put. Oh, dude, we. I still have spoiled milk. <laughs> That's really funny. So if I wanted to, I could be a real bad person right now. We're not going to do that, but like I could really me make her upset. Milk out of the items. Coffee. I have two choices. I can use the super spoiled milk or a brochure. Okay. I like how that was still an available item to use with coffee. Let's deliver this and make amends. I thought I told you to beat it. Or do your ears just not work? We just wanted to bring you coffee and make sure there's no hard feelings. Ha! Ah, that's cute. I promise I don't bite. I just have a job to do. Sometimes I think Charlie's hair gel seeps into his brain. But he brings in most of our revenue. So his happiness is our top priority. Now, Scram, you know how to get in touch with me if you need me. Alright. That did not go well at all. We need some kind of leverage to get Mr. Nova to give us the information we want. I'm certain he knows something. Hmm. Don't you agree? I am. He was being pretty evasive, I agree. Indeed. While you were talking to him, I took the opportunity to look into his history more thoroughly. It turns out he did a series of promos for a local Hassie bar early in his career, and some fans still spot him there from time to time. There you go. It's a long shot, but frankly, everything about this case has been one long shot after another. Maybe we should question the people at this Hassie establishment and look for any dirt we can use to put some pressure on Mr. Nova. Yeah. There must be something. It's the only path I see. Sure. Good idea, the buddy. The bar is located on Market Street, near the Genus Clinic. We can head there whenever you're ready. Isn't that the one with the girl that with the broken <laughs> weather machine? Oh, this is going to be interesting. <sighs> this is where we get our comeuppance. That's all right. Oh, he's still out there now? Again? Welcome back! Care to take another pamphlet or two? <laughs> We're well, here all alone, dude. Ah, the cold weather has made organizing demonstrations a bit difficult, to say the least. But I refuse to relent in our mission. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, I will not rest until I stop these abominations from undoing God's almighty work. Well, at least he truly believes in his things. Yeah, uh, yeah, won't shutting down this clinic cost lives? That's a leading question. Of course some people have life-threatening afflictions, and it's a good thing that science has evolved to treat all kinds of diseases. Very true. Simply wanting cat ears and furry tails does not constitute a disease. A disease of the mind, perhaps. If the government strictly limits genetic alteration surgeries to only life-threatening emergencies, well, that would be a start towards undoing the damage. We are not God. We were made in his image, but his image did not include fur. Interesting. So why would, would genetic modifications make you less human? I feel it's rather simple. It's even in the name. Modifying genes means we are changing the very DNA that makes us unique. We're giving doctors, among other people with a severe lack of understanding of the human condition, the right to make us into entirely new species. 
pup. We are the byproduct of tens of thousands of years of natural selection and evolution. And now these people want that progress to just be reduced to a formula? To be injected into your skin? At your convenience? And why? To fulfill some sick fantasy. We have VR dramas. Leave your imagination at home. Besides, why should we give these self-proclaimed animals the same rights as humans when they clearly don't want to be human? Eh, that's what you're straying off, buddy. <laughs> Need to chill out with that. That's like, uh, what you call it? X-Men. <laughs> How far would you like to that command to go back? That is the greatest misconception of our group. They would have you believe that we'd rather go back to the Dark Ages. Oh sure, the human revolution wants people to go back to washing clothes by hand down by the river, right? We'll all go back to playing with sticks, yes? We do not advocate for a reversal of all technology. That would be ludicrous. We merely want severe limitations on genetic enhancements and a focus on medicinal practice beyond gene therapy. Interesting. That would include an outlawing of cosmetic gene therapy, yes. People parading around in fur and scales as proud abominations. Uh, we need the government to protect yeah. these patients from themselves. Alright, so what's your group accomplished since it was founded? Through some concerted efforts, we've created an alliance with a number of businesses banning service and employment of unhumans. Why are you happy about that? <laughs> unhumans. Yeah, they call themselves hybrids, but we call them what they are. I can't respect those who willingly trade their humanity away. But I mean, you don't distinguish. So, I mean, some people have no choice. Thanks to our efforts, many local businesses are finally gaining the confidence to only serve human beings. If they wanted to feed animals, well, they'd open up a pound. Jeez. Why, just the other day, a Neo-SF landlord thanked me for supporting his decision to deny tenancy to unhumans. He already feels better about his decision to seek out our help. Plus, can you imagine the cleaning fees? All right, that's all I want to know. Great! Do tell me when you get the article out. I love to read the comments. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but doesn't most of the MeshNet speak critically of your organization? Oh, that's cute. The robot wants to join in the discussion now. Oh. Yes, this is true. Though historically, most revolutionaries are unpopular when they're in the middle of the fight. I sleep comfortably knowing that history will be on my side. How interesting. Yep, I promise I'll write a fair assessment of the situation. Why, thank you. I appreciate bold integrity from good journalists like yourself. Thanks for the interview. I'll let you know about anything else. Oh, please do. Have a lovely day now. He's a nice guy. He's just and remember, <laughs> really misguided. God designed you perfectly just the way you are. So, like, I'm going to go on a small rant, I guess. Like, his original notions are somewhat noble. And I'm, I'm like, bear with me before the comments flare up. Not letting technology progress without any check, right? So, like, if you, any of you guys have read, like, pretty much any Michael Crichton novel ever, he's the author of Jurassic Park, and all of his novels have the exact same concept, where, like, unbridled technological growth without, like, the moral implications that are involved with that. It shows its detriment, right? So, like... For instance, in Jurassic Park, right? Like, they recreate nature, essentially, on this island. And they think that they have all the things done. They're like, oh, yeah, our technology is fine. Like, it's foolproof. Like, we made all these things lysine-dependent. We made them all female. Like, no way this could possibly fail. But even with all of their fail-safes, they failed to understand what they were actually doing. And then they ended up making dinosaurs that reproduced. And then dinosaurs escaped. <laughs> and then they were no longer lysine-dependent. And then dinosaurs got out of the island. 
Um, so, like, his original argument saying that, like, science should be regulated within reason. And, and like, I don't want to talk about, like, heavily regulated, but at least there should be people there that can give an unbiased point of view, right? Like a third party who can sit back and objectively look at facts. For that part, I'll agree with Brian, Brian Mulberry. Now, beyond that, the dude's a bigot. <laughs> like, hardcore. So he's creating segregation of his people, right? Like, oh, they call themselves hybrids. I call them unhumans. Like, we prefer not to serve them food. We don't want to serve, like, have them live in our places. And it's like, it's like, hey, let's jump backwards in time to where we recreate segregation. Um, it, it's just really interesting to see how that works. And he feels so noble in his cause, but like, that's a really big mirror to how society looks today. I mean, not just today, like how it's always looked, right? So like the civil rights movement had the same thing. People who thought like segregation shouldn't end for the same reason. <laughs> like, pe like people are too different. They, sh they shouldn't be together. The same thing for like equality of men and women shouldn't be together. Same thing for gay rights. People, <laughs> there were people like him all around and they felt so noble in their cause. They believed in it so heavily uh, and felt they were justified. But like, so he's like super misguided. His original thought may not be misguided as far as like technology needing to be considered. But like everything beyond that is like, bro, you are a bigot, buddy. All right, so let's see if we can fix you. Don't bug it. It already seems to be in a stormy mood. Okay. Well, this should be interesting when we get into the happy bar. And she'd be like, she's gonna be like, yo, why'd you break my stuff? <laughs> All right. Okay, I don't know who Keith is, but we're, we'll see. Hassie bar customers tend to be regulars with the new ha Hassie hot cups. You could last all day in here. All right. I haven't seen you around here before. Is there something I can help you with? Yeah, you got. It. Yeah, I heard Charlie Nova hangs around here sometimes. Uh, another one of his fans, huh? Yeah, yeah, he comes here sometimes. I don't really get why everyone likes him so much. Yeah, what's your issue with him? Well, I have a picture from this time he flipped off a box of kittens. <laughs> Somebody brought them to try to give away, and one of them scratched him up. Ooh. He ended up taking it home, but he really hammed it up about getting scratched. I think he ended up calling him, uh, I think it was Captain Snuggles. That's awesome. It was pretty funny, actually. I'll send your Rama picture. This is pretty innocuous. <laughs> we are going to need more evidence if we're to fabricate a believable story that will convince Mr. Nova it's in his best interest to help us. All right. Who are you, Keith? Oh, hey, it's you! Wow! Long time! Who's Do I know this? You? Yeah. Oh, there's Keith, an old buddy of mine. Hey, not too old now. <laughs> Did you manage to keep that plan I got you alive? Oh. Uh. Oh, man! Rest in peace, Wilty. You probably overwatered it, didn't you? Yeah. That's exactly right. Thanks. Figures. So, uh, what's with the bot? <laughs> That's Turing, my, uh, my ROM. Yours? Really? Huh. I didn't think you liked to bring work home, as it were. Anyway, it's great to see you. What brings you to the Hassey Bar? Doing a review of that sweet weather ROM outside or something? Actually, here in an investigation. All right, now that's the kind of journalism I'm talking about. Yeah. Indeed, we're looking into some accusations made against Charlie Nova. And we're actually trying to build up a solid case against him. No shit. I actually may have exactly what you need. Oh, perfect, Keith. Charlie comes here all the time. You know that show he's host of, Star in the Stratosphere? Yeah, that's one of his shows. 
That show where normal people try to become actors and singers and all. Yeah. Listen to this recording I made when he was here last month on his book tour. So many people come up to me thinking that if they can sing or act, I'll just make them a superstar. But that isn't how it works. Raw talent isn't enough to get you by in this industry. And anyone who thinks so is lying to themselves. It takes hard work and persistence. You gotta want it, and want it bad. But the kids I get on Star in the Stratosphere, which I host each and every week, as you all know, they're all so young and hungry. I love them. I do my damnedest to make sure they get what they want. They give me their best, so I'm gonna give them mine. It's not much, huh. and it might help you build a case if you chop it up right. Just keep my name off it. I post hiking pictures, not scandals. Yeah, thanks, Well, Keith. if nothing else, the threat of this dropping on the mess should get them talking. Here, I just made a copy for you. Anyway, I'd love to catch up soon. For now, I'll let you keep at it. You can usually find me here if you want to chat again. Awesome. Thanks, Keith. Cool. Say, but why did you tell Keith that I belong to you? Um. So we have a choice now. So like, I do like you, and I don't have a wrong with my own yet. Or it's more convenient that that way during investigations, and we got what we were after, didn't we? I'll be like, oh, I do like you, because we're going to be nice to him. I'll thank you to remember that I am not the same as any ordinary ROM that exists to be subservient. I don't like being forced to assert my independence as a unique individual, but I really thought you were above this. Oh. Anyway. I should have said something about the investigations then. That hurt. Hmm. But now we have enough on the other one. Alright, cool. But that's alright. We can't win them all. Probably not the best thing to say to a sentient, uh, sentient ROM. Which makes sense. I get that. No worries. So we're gonna write over this. And I think this is what we've done. This has actually been a pretty long episode. So. Kind of interesting, and we finally have what we needed on Charlie Nova. So I'm kind of interested to see what information he has. So we'll figure that out, and we will find out next episode. So as always, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Lay the smackdown on that like button, and we will see you next time.